Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. This is part six of a series of videos we've been doing on financial mathematics. This is the concluding part. And on this part, we're going to talk about annuities. Let's start. Unlike loans, annuities is something that an individual chooses to pay regularly every month, maybe sometimes every year towards a certain fund that he or she will then uh, enjoy after their retirement. Okay, so it's something that's positive. And this is one of those situations where the individual gets to smile at the end of those 20 or 30 years of uh, investments, monthly payments, uh, not the bank. Well, the bank has got other ways to smile. We'll discuss that on some other day on some other video, right? Let's take a look at this example to understand what annuities is all about. Okay, so in this question, we have Charles who plans to invest in a retirement plan for 30 years, all right? That's a retirement plan. And for 30 years, he's going to be investing. So maybe, you know, he he wisened up and he was quite young. Some of us, you know, in their 40s, 45s, you decide and you see, oh, you've got about 15 more years to go before you retire. So let's start investing some money. So perhaps, you know, if he was investing when he was quite young, uh, he probably had to invest just in not that great an amount because the way you go across this plan is, after your retirement, let's say most of us retire uh, around the age of 60 and you figure out every month how much money you want, whether it's uh, rent, if you have your own house, then the rent is not included, uh, how much your monthly expenses are going to be. And that's the kind of monthly amount you figure out. And when you figure that out, you uh, invest accordingly. So Charles invests for 30 years, apparently in this plan, according to this plan, he will deposit. Can you see that he deposits? $1,000 at the beginning of each month and receive 6.5% compound interest compounded monthly, right? 6.5% per annum uh, compounded monthly. So for 30 years, he's going to be investing $1,000 at the beginning of each month. So that's 30 times 12. And the bank is actually going to give him 6.5% compounded monthly. Now, the question is to find out the future value. That means at the end of the 30 years, how much money has he you know, accrued, accumulated over those 30 years? So find the future value of the investment after 30 years. Give your answer correct to the nearest dollar. OK, so let's jump to our calculator to figure this thing out. We're going to go and add our calculator page and make our way to the finance solver. OK, so uh, N is the number of payments. So we've got 30 times 12. Remember, every month he's going to be paying uh, $1,000. All right. So the interest is 6.5% per annum. So that's OK. Present value. Well, he starts off at zero, right? I mean, this is the difference between uh, investing into a retirement fund like this and uh, the loans, because in the loans, what happens is that the future value, if we must become zero, but in the investment plan, when you're trying to invest into a retirement plan, that's where the present value is zero because you start off with zero and then you start investing. The payments are regular payments. Do you see? Now, this is another difference between the normal compound interest because there also you have a, an amount that you invest, right? But you invest at the start and then after that, you don't make any regular payments. You just make one payment and then at the end of five years or six years, whatever the compounding period was, you get that amount and the principal, right? But here, the present value is zero, but you start investing every month regular equal payments. Okay, so the regular equal payments is kind of the same idea for the loan when you're repaying back, but you're right, trying to repay back in a loan, you're trying to repay back something that you've borrowed. Unlike in this case, you're actually investing into your future. All right, so that's like a retirement plan, but there is no principle as you had in the case of the uh, compound interest. So the present value is zero, but the payments in this case for Charles is 1000. And because he's paying, you got to use the negative sign. Okay, so those things you got to be careful because the money is leaving his pocket. You indicate with the negative sign. Future value is what we want to find out, right? At the end of 30 years, uh, what's the future value of this kind of an investment? You're going to find out payments per year. Well, he's going to be making monthly payments. So that's 12 compounded monthly, it says in this question. So that compound period is also 12. And then he's making the payment at the beginning, as it says. So now I'm going to make my way to the future value cell and I'm using a shift tab. Remember when you're moving across the different cells, you use tab or shift tab. Only the cell that you want to compute the value, that's where you hit enter. If you're going to hit enter, otherwise in any other cell, it's going to give an error message. Okay, so here's where 
we are going to hit enter because we want to compute the future value of that investment. We're going to hit enter and see that the value is going to be, wow, that's that's about a million. I'm just going to enter that value as it is here. Uh, so this is, we want to uh, uh, round it off to the nearest dollar. So this is going to be uh, 1,112,169. Well, we'll just make it 170, right? Uh, 170 because that's rounding it off. So 17000. 0, 0. So have I got it right? 1,112,170. So I'm going to switch back to my iPad and that's the amount, that's the value of the investment. $112,170 is what Charles is going to make if he were to invest $1,000 every month faithfully. That's discipline, all right? To be able to keep set aside $1,000 every month consistently for 30 years. And so at the end of the 30 years, Charles is going to be a happy man, all right? Now, let's look at the second part of the question. Uh, the second part of the question says, after the 30-year period, Charles will start receiving. Now, this is what he's invested into. So he's, you know, got that money there. He will start receiving regular monthly payments of $7,500, all right? So, According to the plan, every month he's going to be receiving $7,500. Now, after your retirement, especially when you're in your 60s, if you're going to be getting that kind of a money every month, that's good. That's nice. That's decent. You're going to be, you're going to be happy. You don't have to depend on anyone else. Okay. So I think people in their 40s and above try to identify this number and then invest accordingly. Okay. So if you have a different kind of a question on some other video, we'll solve that. But according to this plan, Charles is going to be receiving $7,500 at the end of each month, how long? And in years and months will the payments last? Because it's not like that, that 1 million is going to last forever, you know? So accordingly, when people make an investment, they try and figure out, okay, after 60, they'll say that I want monthly payments for 30 years. And sometimes people make plans accordingly, okay? But in this case, I think we need to find out how long will the money last in terms of years and months, okay? So let's jump to the calculator. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to copy this value and put it out here as a present value because that's the amount of money that's there in the bank. Remember, for those last 30 years, Charles has actually accumulated, accrued that amount of money. It's almost a million uh, dollars. It's there in the bank. But now, when we want to find out how long will it last, remember this money is there in the bank. It's not in my hand. It is my money, but it is there and I've been paying 1000 I mean, Charles has been paying $1,000 faithfully every month. That was negative, negative, negative. He was paying and it is there. So even though it is not in his hands, it is his money, it's there. Okay, so he's invested. It's not like paying back. He has invested its money out of his hands. That's why it has to be negative. So be careful. I think this is the one of the things that students make mistakes all the time when it should be negative and when it should be positive. So the present value right now, it's there in the bank. It's not in his hand. It's negative, okay? The future value will make it zero because we want to find out how long will that amount, that $1,112,170, how long will it last? So you got to make that future value zero, okay? How long will it take for that present value to become zero, okay? So that's why this is zero, okay? Now the payment, payment is what he's receiving, money coming into his hands. That's going to be positive this time, okay? It's going to be positive and it was 7,500, right? 7,500 monthly he's going to re uh, receive. And everything else is the same. That's uh, per, uh, 12 payments per year. And it's compounded again with the same deal. So it's compounded uh, monthly at 6.5. That all is the same, except that the money he's going to be receiving at the end, I believe it said it was at the end of each month. And now we will find out how long will that present value last? Meaning how long will it take for that $1 million to become uh, zero, okay? And remember that's negative. I've already explained why it's negative because it's not in your hands. It's there at the bank. It's your money, okay? It's not, it's there. And how long will it take for that amount to become zero? But the payments is going to be positive, all right? So we just use shift tab and go back to the N, capital N. And here we are going to hit enter, all right? Watch. And it says something like 300, you know, something like that. Uh, so many uh, payments, okay? That's the number of big payments. So many payments, that means so many months, 300 months. So let's just hit escape and go to the calculator page. Now here we'll try and recall that uh, n, the total number of payments. And we can do that by going to VARS and uh, get tvm.n. That's going to give us the total number of payments as 300.95, rounded off to two decimal places. And we've got uh, to find the total number of years and months. This is the total number of payments. So what we're going to do is that we're going to divide that 
figure. So I'll just recall that entry with all the decimals that preserves accuracy. And we're going to divide that by the payments per year. So we can go to VARS and get that payments per year with 12 actually. So when I hit that, I'm going to get that as 25.08. That's 25 years, okay? Because this is uh, every month. So it's almost like saying that's 300 months, 300.95 months. And when you divide that by 12, you'll get 25 years, 0.08. And if you want to find that also, 0 0.08 times 12, uh, that's uh, 0.96. So we can just say that it's like, you know, um, let me just see how many days is that. Round it out to 30. That's like 28 days, so almost a month. So it's 25 years and almost a month, 28 days is almost a month. So you can say that how long in years and months, because they've said in months, right? They've asked the question in months. So you can say that it is 25 years and one month, okay? And you can, if you want to be a little specific, you can say 28 days rounded off to a month. So that is how long Charles will continue to receive those monthly payments of $7,500 uh, from that investment, okay, that uh, $1,112,170, something like that. Every month, if he were to receive $7,500 at that rate, uh, so it will last for 25 years and one month. And so those are the things that you should be um, careful about when you are making your own investment, okay? So what's the amount that you want every month after your retirement? This is good, 25 years after uh, you're 60, this is a good plan, right? So if you try and figure out how many years do you think you want that kind of a monthly uh, repayment, okay? And what's the amount that you want every month, okay? So those two things you need to keep in mind when you make your investment. And even for these kind of questions, because it's a regular monthly payment, you can make use of the amortization table to answer whichever part of the question you're looking for, whether it's the interest, whether it's the principal, whether it's the balance, you know, you can make use of the amortization table. So with that, we wrap up our series on financial mathematics. I'm going to link the entire playlist in the description box below in case you've missed out on any of those videos. Let me know in the comments below if you found any of these videos useful and please subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.